creating interesting, engaging, and fun encounters that moves an adventure along, it can be very easy if you consider designing for the beats. <laughs> Beats are a commonly used term in storytelling. Now, what does a beat mean? It can be different for different people within different mediums, but they all have a specific purpose. For some storytellers, for example, a beat refers to a specific plot point within a story. For others, it can refer to the tone of the scene, and some even more have different or more unique ways to categorize it. Let's take for example, you encounter a boss's minion. That would be a story beat. We'd also call this a plot point. What happens after this? For other storytellers, a beat can be more about the intensity or emotion of plot points rather than exactly what happens. You could have up beats for intensifying actions or down beats for slowing down action might also refer to the mood or atmosphere of the beat. The battle between light and dark, hope and despair, work and rest. Regardless of what the beats are called or how exactly you can define them, they're a very useful tool in creating a structure for your adventure. Since beats are tied to individual encounters, it's best to start thinking about beats while you're outlining your adventure and creating encounters. However, it's often hard to get the perfect view of the overall beat structure of an adventure until you have the encounters designed and start putting them together. You can start thinking of beats early, but you don't have to worry too much about them. If you're thinking of varying focus encounters in terms of the pillars that will hold up the gameplay, or in terms of prompting different times of action and not hammering on the same types of plot points, that's good enough. You'll have time when you go back to review or revise your adventure, even while play testing it. So when do you start to think of your adventure as a whole entity rather than a group of separate encounters? When you start to do this, you can look back and see how your encounters flow together. What follows is an examination of different types of beats in an adventure. Once you have your beats and your plot points worked out, you can not only plot out a single day's adventure, but you can also plan out the totality of your campaign. In an adventure, just as in a story, the plot points or the beats should move the story for should move the story forward. Those events sometimes advance the action quickly and sometimes more slowly. And sometimes there can have red herrings or they can be dead ends or fail to move the story forward at all, but they can still be interesting and dramatic and can deepen the player's enjoyment without actually moving closer to the resolution. In order to keep the players interested and invested in the story, it's best to diversify the beats that you're going to use. So for example, if the main goal is to find five different points of information in a row that moves the character to the next encounter, that's hitting the same beats over and over. And it can really be repetitive. It's better if you switch it up, even to a smaller extent. So for example, the players have to go to the tavern. And the only way they're gonna get this piece of information is by beating up the town bully. That could be different than you going to, let's say a widow's house and she has the second point of information and you have to help her recover some lost family treasure or something along the way. And even then, it might be better if instead of pleasing or having to deal with two people, maybe you have a puzzle that the players have to solve after the first or second encounter. So to avoid plot point fatigue, 
break up encounters of the same type of beats and do something a little different. Make the goal or the focus in consecutive encounters different. Put an encounter that calls for deepening understanding of an NPC or touching on a personal goal of a particular character or just simply surviving an ambush. It eliminates monotony that can set in. Just as you can have too many consecutive encounters with the same type of plot points, too many consecutive encounters that cover different beats can also be overwhelming. Sometimes you might have to design an adventure where you have no choice but to use similar beat types several times in a row. So for example, in a dungeon crawl written to be played in a specific amount of time, we might have little or no choice but to have four combat counters in a row culminating in a fight with a boss. In this case, it's still possible to vary the encounters enough so that players don't feel like it's the same type of encounter. The first encounter could be written so characters have to, let's say, break through a barrier. Then the next encounter might be one where characters have to defend the barrier they just went through. Well, the next encounter see, sees them having to fight enemies while escorting a prisoner through an unknown tunnel and keep them calm and then the last one would lead up to the boss fight this sort of internal variation is equally possible within other beats as well for consecutive role-playing encounters changing the action type means changing the situation and allowing the characters to react for example rather than having several consecutive role-playing encounters where characters talk with members of a town council uh, to gain information or convince them of some course of action. One council member might only trust people with a strong knowledge of history, forcing the character to prove themselves with more than just a standard persuasion check. Another council member might hold a secret grudge against one of the characters, planting illegal goods or evidence of a crime on the character, forcing the character into a defensive posture in the middle of negotiations. Now all these different types of beats that we've mentioned already are vital to the story flow of an adventure, but we need to remember that D&D must also work as a game. We can often see this in the concept of short and long rests and the resources that are important to them. It's often inconvenient in terms of storytelling, but vital to the game. So for example, how many times does it make no sense in terms of plot or tone for characters to take a long rest, but they'll do it anyway because they're low on spell slots? How many adventures seem far too easy because parties took long rests after each encounters, ensuring that they're working at maximum each time that they're tested? When used well, pacing of these game structures can add drama to the adventure rather than detract from it. The rest can intensify heroic action, heightening the stakes in an adventure. You can enforce consequences for hard narrative driven choices. If there are no narrative victory without danger of failure, then the encounters must be arranged so that they provide danger themselves. Or weigh potential negative outcomes against each other. So for example, what happens if the characters take a long rest here? Are they on a time deadline? Will that eat into the time? Are they only able to take a long rest in a very dangerous place? The same thing follows with short rests. Can they take that rest or if they're, let's say, in the middle of a dungeon, maybe a patrol of goblins comes by. What happens if the characters take no rest here? So for each of those questions, what are the potential consequences of each? In some ways, it helps to make a flow chart with each, with each of your beats that would have the results of the decisions that the characters make. What changes do you need to make to previous or future encounters in order to make the flow of the 
a venture interesting as both a game and a story. Using the idea of rests as an example, I once had a campaign where a town was under attack and there's a time pressure for the characters to complete certain tasks. Now they were also given what choice of tasks they like. So for example, there were people who were trapped inside of the town and the enemy lines had not yet been set. They had the option to go out and attack the enemy to create a diversion and allow some townspeople to escape. Or they could go and they could get some of the uh, town leaders, some of whom they've been very acquainted with, and especially one of the main character's daughters. And they could rescue them and take them onto a ship that would then sail for safety. This gives the characters a choice of what would they do. Now, during this game, I was also using a cooking timer. So they were able to hear the tick, 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 tick. And this gave them the subconscious idea that they had to hurry. So if they had decided to help some of the villagers escape, a lot of those noble folk would possibly die as the enemy would have been able to invade through the wall on the other side of town. If they went and they helped the noble people, especially the daughter, then those people trying to escape the town, either by roll of a percentage die, would have been trapped in the town and then overloaded the boats that were there, or they would have died trying to escape. Then the characters had to make a choice. They could take a long rest or a short rest, but I didn't tell them how much time they have. So they really had to choose with a ticking clock, which is worth it. Did they have enough time to replenish some of their resources or no? Now there were certain points that were plot points where I physically put my hand over the egg timer and I stopped I stopped it from going. So the players had the sense that at least for the moment they were safe. They weren't under that time pressure. So it wasn't three hours or four hours of constant stress. They were able to breathe a little and they were able to replenish some resources at some points, but they had to go on and they had to choose very carefully. I allowed them to choose what kind of adventure they would want it to be. The whole session was divided into a three part arc. The first were those two. The second were trying to fight off the enemy forces and allow certain people to get to the docks and rescue as many town people as they could. And they had built up a relationship with many NPCs at this point. And the last arc was for them to GTFO. They needed to escape themselves. It was up to the players how much time that they would spend on anything. If they decided to rest, they might have run out of time and therefore they would fail both missions. And the result of this determined going on in the future. If they were able to save enough people in enough time, they were able to take a nice ship out of the city. If they weren't, they were stuck in a rowboat out on the ocean and they didn't know if they would have any friends to back them up in the future. So by manipulating the different types of plot points, you keep an interest in the game, you get more investment for the players, and it's just more fun overall. So let me know what you think of this video. How do you arrange your adventures? What kind of story beats do you use? Leave your comment down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll have more D&D content soon.